Welcome back. In this video I'm going to talk about how you index or slice NumPy vectors, sort of similar to indexing and slicing Python lists but with a few subtle differences. And then I will look at a quick example of using NumPy to do a more difficult calculation. So, starting point, a little bit of code, run that code. It starts as usual, import NumPy as NP, and we give ourselves a vector to play with. Vector, 1D array, same thing, sort of, in my terminology. So, V, I've got it there, what's V of naught? Hugely surprising, it's 10. What's V of 1? It's 20, and so on. Hopefully that is exactly what you'd expect. I can also use the negative indexing type notation. Remember in Python if you use a negative index, the length of the array is added to it. So in this case we get the last element of the array, 50. V of minus 2 of course is one further back, that's the 40. No surprises there. I can also slice, as I could with Python lists, by using a colon in the index. So Let's go from 2 to 4. Now, remember, this is Python. That's 2 up to, but not including 4. So I get the 30, 40 element there. There is a complication, however, which I'm going to use the Python visualizer to illustrate for you. So over here we have the Python visualizer, which hopefully some of you have played with already. It gives us the ability to write code in 3.6. There's a new experimental version, 3.6. Python 3.6 with Anaconda. I need to use that because I need NumPy. So I'm going to copy that piece of code into the Python visualizer and I'm going to do a, the same statement I just did here, except I'm going to say a bit of v is equal to v from 2 through 4. And then I'm going to do an assignment to say bit naught equals 11. Let's observe that, except I mistyped it, bit naught. Let's visualize that so we can see what it does. So I'm about to start. I'm going to make my frame a little larger so you can see what happens. We import NumPy. We then have an empty global frame, as it's called, but we have a reference to the NumPy module. I'm going to assign to the vector. I have one there. There it is. V is an ND array instance, a one-dimensional array in this case. I'm now going to take my slice. The result probably isn't surprising, but it tells a little bit of a lie. There's my bit. I'm about to assign to bit 0. That's that element there. I'm going to set it to 11. Watch carefully what happens. Did you see that this array changed as well? So this is a bit of a lie, this picture, because what's actually happening, that bit is what we call a, a, a view into V. Now there's no equivalent of that in ordinary Python up until now. The notion that a vector can reference the parent vector, if you like, but with changed indexing. So this is really looking into this, a view into this. And this brings up our old friend aliasing. That's really all I wanted to show about that particular feature. Um, it's a trap because Python doesn't behave like that. NumPy is different. Of course, and I hope this is an of course, if I say I have another vector v2 which is equal to v and I modify v2, then exactly what you would expect in ordinary Python happens as well. I'm going to say v2 1 equals 11 and I'm going to print v and v2. So let's see what happens when I run that piece of code. Hopefully there's no great surprise for you this time. The change I made to v2 by setting v2 of 1 is 11 has modified both v and v2. No surprise there, I hope. And I'm going to finish this video by walking you through an example showing the power of NumPy vectorization in computing a mathematical sort of formula, which of course is its long suit, its strength. So there's a formula, hopefully it's familiar to many of you. It's a statistical calculation of the variance of a sequence of numbers xi. So we've got x1 up to xn numbers. From each number we subtract the, ma the, sorry, the mean, which is x bar, which is given by that particular formula there, the sum of the x's divided by the number of them. We square all those differences and we sum them all up and we divide by n. That's all there is to it. That's the variance. I'm going to do this calculation with some random marks. I'm using the np.random module, calling its uniform function, to get, one, uh, to get sorry, 50 values from a uniform distribution in the range 0 to 100. 
That's my starting data. Over here I've used data loaded from a file. Obviously it doesn't matter where it comes from, it's just numbers. So having got all that, I'm going to compute the mean first of all. I'm going to do this calculation using low-level basic arithmetic rather than using the functions that, MATLAB, uh, that NumPy provides for the role. So I'm going to go mean is equal to the sum of the values, use np.sum as we did before, the sum of the marks divided by the number of them. And the way to find the number of a uh, NP array is by calling or asking for its size attribute. I could use len, but this is more NumPy-ish. Numpy -ish. That gives me the mean. Now let's look at this calculation here, which looks a little bit harder, but is perfectly straightforward. Marks minus mean for a start. What does that mean? That means subtract from every mark the value of the mean. That's the xi minus x bar, and that's, of course, the entire sequence of them. Square that and sum those values up. np dot sum. And then we divide by the count of them, the number of them, which is the marks.size, and we can assign the result to variance. There it is. That's all there is to it. So essentially, we can, a very direct translation of that there. No need for a loop or anything. We've done it all that way. If you look back on your lecture notes, you'll see that in doing it in Python with a loop is somewhat more difficult. Same idea, though. So now I want to print it, and I'm going to print it using the exciting new format strings that Python now offers. And these are strings which are prefixed by an F. So this is sort of like uh, the calling the format method on a string, except this string sort of self-formats, as you'll see in a minute. So the string can just have any literal characters in it, like marks equals, but then if I use braces, I can put expressions that I want to print. In this case, the expression I want to print is the mean, and the format in which I want to print it, which is done by prefixing with a colon, is three decimal digits formatted as a floating point number. Over on the left, I did it in one line. I'm going to do it in two here because I think it was a bit compact over on the left. Let's do the variance as well in the same way. The variance is given by, in braces, the variance value I want to print and 0.3f as a format. Close the brace, close the quotes, close the parenthesis. Let's run that first of all, see if I got it right. What we do, the marks is 50.33 and the variance is 810. NumPy has its own functions to compute these, so we'll do it. We'll run that again by copying those two format statements, so print statements, and replacing mean by the NumPy mean function applied to the marks, and the variance by the np.var function applied to the marks. That's obviously the way you do it in practice. You don't want to reinvent the wheel, but I wanted to illustrate the power of the arithmetic operations on NumPy arrays. So hopefully I get the same answers printed twice. It looks like I did. What we do, it worked. So that's it, really. And the next video, I'm going to talk about advanced indexing, which is a bit more tricky. This is the basics of NumPy on 1D arrays already covered. Thanks for watching. Bye.